everybody. Welcome to the County Seat. I'm your host, Chad Booth. Today, we're on location in San Juan County in the shadows of Navajo Mountain. This is on the Navajo Nation Reservation. And it is in this area that the challenges that face the residents here are just troublesome and should be troublesome to every person that lives in the state. The issue is water. A settlement was reached between the state of Utah and the Navajo Nation. Those of us who live along the Wasatch Front think, great, everything's handled, but they're only on paper, they're not in practice. That is the topic of our conversation today, and we'll begin with a conversation that I had earlier in the day with Commissioner Willie Grayeyes from San Juan County. Every time you go to Washington, you have to educate those what they don't know, how these treaty rights are in place. What was contained in the agreement between the state of Utah and the Navajo Nation? 83,000 acre feet of water. From the Colorado River or? San Juan River. San Juan River, okay. Was there infrastructure money or just acre feet in that settlement agreement? The, uh, the agreement is in place and the state of Utah is supposed to come out with eight million contribute to the infrastructure. The bill in the house right now is for infrastructure, maintenance, repair, um, whatever other needs. But that's a separate, that doesn't include the eight million that the state of Utah pledged. Yeah. Okay. Are they willing to deliver that separate of uh, holdup in the federal government? Well, uh, when Congress approves the uh, allocation for infrastructure, mm -hmm. The state of Utah will go ahead and release also. So at the same same time, who it would be uh, depend on how detailed would be in terms of how the uh, the state of Utah would be uh, in position to say, or he might say, just pool it with the other funding. So. That's the option. But the way the state is, I'm sure they could be looking for how the expenditure do's and don'ts will be attached to it. Do you trust the state government more than the federal government? My tribe doesn't have a treaty with the state of Utah. My people have a treaty with the federal government, which is being underfunded also, but nevertheless, we do have some trickle of, you know how the drought works. Mm -hmm. It's been more than 50 years of drought, but we have a 100 year drought on the Navajo reservation for federal funding. That's why we we don't have the infrastructure of main truck line for water potable water. We don't have the uh, main trunk line for power to turn lights on and housing units. We don't have the broadband uh, on and on. So those are some of the major issues that we have. We are always underfunded. How do you propose the advocacy to make sure that Congress funds you properly? I don't think it'll ever happen. So it's not the tribe. Tribe puts in their money. It's the federal government trust responsibility is totally underfunded year after year. So the, I don't know who will understand our treaty, treaty rights. And you think that's where the problem actually lies, is just that's that they're ignoring the treaty? That's the majority of the problem. Mm -hmm. Rights that were negotiated in the treaty are specifically being ignored, not just a matter of underfunding, they're just ignoring certain obligations that they're supposed to be dealing with? Yes. Okay. So how dire is the water situation here? 
Well, you can see there's no uh, fields that's prepared. It's a dry land. Mm -hmm. It's a sagebrush country. So would the would the tanks, if if the trunk lines were to distribute lines out to the private properties, does that system have enough capacity for people to do farming? Bureau of Reclamation, the Navajo Tribe, Indian Health Service. They studied this area some years ago. They found nothing, no adequate uh, aquifer. We have all this land, but no water. Well, I think what I'd like to do is go see some of this. Okay. So let's, let's take a road trip and figure it out. We'll be right back on the county seat. Welcome back to the county seat. We are on location in San Juan County with Commissioner Willie Gray Eyes, and we are at tank number 2T525, where they're doing some windmill repair. Yeah. How critical of a lifeline is the working windmill and in, in well up here? This is the only source of reliable water that we had before the uh, the system started breaking down. It's all of these uh, residents up the valley, down the valley, um, they have to haul water from one way. 50 miles round, round trip. trip. We need to do more than just repair this. And my plan is when that Congressional appropriation is approved in Washington uh, related to the uh, Navajo Nation State of Utah Water Settlement Agreement. I'm hoping that I can bring some of that water up here. We stopped to water some cows with Commissioner Gray Ice during our tour. There is perhaps no better reminder of just how dire the water situation on the reservation is than seeing a family's water source sitting next to their house. Caitlin Harris, a field engineer with the nonprofit Dig Deep, was conducting a well test when we wandered by. She explained how important this water source is to people who live on Paiute Mesa. It's really critical for livestock owners as well as water haulers. Um, people come here pretty much every morning, especially in the summer, to get water for their livestock and crops um, and potentially for other needs as well. And so if it's not working, then they have to drive either all the way down the, the Mesa, which is about an hour and a half through sandy roads, or about three hours to Tuba City to get water to fill up. I was just talking to a gentleman this morning who was telling me that when this isn't working, he always goes to Tuba City to make sure that he has water for his livestock. They usually drive like a pickup truck with a 275 gallon, one of those big square tanks in the back or you know whatever you can find barrel wise. Um, I think everybody has access to different kinds of containers, but anything that fits in the back of a pickup. Yeah, and that's just for livestock water. For potable water, you know, it's a, it's a completely different story. While the Utah Navajo Water Settlement is intended to create water solutions, there's still a disconnect between what appears to be action taking place in Washington and what things really oh. look like on the ground. It's where you can see the uh, sagebrush. Yeah. All of that. This was filled with uh, green and, and so tall. The water went corn. away in the 30s or the 40s or? Uh, the 30s, 40s, and the 50s. I think that if you put indigenous people, indigenous leadership, and you center issues around indigenous people and their causes and needs, you will take care of everyone else. And so, yes, I think we would be a lot further along if we worked with and for indigenous communities and leaders 
than to ignore them or forget them. You know, it's 2020 and we still have community members who this is their homeland and has always been their homeland and don't have running water or sanitation issues. And that's something that we need to put at the center of health and community health and well-being. And I think more than thinking about, you know, what what it looks like on paper, but also like what community members need and want and say that they need and want. And running water is definitely at the top of the list for that. And um, I think that there's a lot of creative ways that you could go about using that money to get people hot and cold running water that doesn't necessarily look like, you know, a pipe water from the San Juan River, but is, you know, more infrastructure for wells or more infrastructure for irrigation, for agriculture. So in this area up here, you actually have a need for two systems of water. One that's an agricultural grade of water for crops, but you still have a potable water issue because this, the water that uh, you could get off the lake wouldn't really be treated, would it? Well, the water that's going to be off the, uh, coming off the lake will be used for totally agriculture and mm -hmm. livestock. Mm -hmm. The other potable water that is being planned also from probably 50 miles down the down, down the Mesa, Mesa uh -huh. south. And that would be a pipeline that would... That would be pipeline in here also, so... But you can't move on any of it until you get the funding? I can't move anything and propose anything. All I'm doing is a general information as to what my plans are. Uh-huh. Uh, hopefully, uh, it will be absorbed by individuals that the land users are here and support it. So that's where we are. So this is very, I'm glad that they're working on it. Yeah. So you've got two wells up here that should be producing each a, a fair amount of water and it, and between the two of them, you're only getting a, one well's worth of water out of it. Is, right. that, is that what I understood from the engineer? Yes, the, the one down there is the only one that's uh, soft water. Let's continue our tour, and we'll catch up with you in just a minute on County Seat. Welcome back to the county seat. We are uh, talking about the uh, water situation on the Navajo Nation, and uh, we now are going to take a little bit of time and talk to Senator Mitt Romney from Utah. The senator uh, was uh, able to uh, get some legislation pushed that we had mentioned earlier in our conversation, the Water Settlement Act of 2019, and uh, we want to spend a little time about how that is progressing. Thanks, Chad. Good to be with you. What's the status of the bill in Washington right now? So it passed the Senate, but in order for us to actually get money to the Navajo Nation, we have to, number two, get the House to do the same thing, to pass the same legislation. It doesn't have to be unanimous, but at least has to pass the House. And then the appropriators have to actually appropriate the money which this legislation authorizes. And uh, so the first part's done. We finally got the, the Senate on, on board, the entire Senate, Republicans and Democrats, now it's in the House. That's a sticking point. We got to get Nancy Pelosi to take it up. I'm sure it will pass if she takes it up. But, you know, the Speaker of the House has extraordinary power and uh, she decides what goes on the calendar and what does not. So we need the committee that's responsible for this legislation to take it up, to uh, uh, report it out of their committee and get a vote on the, uh, on the floor of the House. There were two themes that were pretty apparent in uh, my conversation uh, locally out there in San Juan County with Commissioner Gray Eyes and with some of the people that we met along the way. And that is that this is a desperate situation. And um, I mean, we went out to one of the main wells that is supporting people out uh, on top of one of the mesas out there and it was broken. Does some of that get lost in the translation between Washington and on the ground uh, on the reservation? You know, I think that the challenge in Washington is less that they don't understand the need. Uh, it's more the politics of the place, uh, which is uh, the Democrats have, decide, have to decide what's in their interest, what's going to help them get reelected, uh, what's going to help Ben McAdams uh, get reelected, what's going to help Republicans 
uh, in, in, in the house and so forth. And so they go through that calculation to decide what to bring forward. And, and uh, because I think there's, there's general recognition that this is a very, very good deal for the United States of America, including the Navajo Nation. I mean, and, and you understand the parameters of this, which is to say, look, we're, we're concerned about going into a multi-year litigation setting where the Navajo Nation brings a lawsuit saying that much of the water in the Colorado is theirs. By the way, they got there first, so that water is theirs. And then we could have Western states, including Utah, in real trouble uh, being able to get the allocation of water that we need. And so the Navajo Nation has said, look, we'll put aside all that litigation if you'll make sure and get running water to our houses, because half the houses in the Navajo Nation have no running water. And so we said, okay, we'll come up with $200 million at the federal level. And the state of Utah came up with $8 million. The state legislatures and, and governors already done this. They, they've said okay to the $8 million. We just need to get the $220 million. And people deserve to have running water, particularly with COVID going around and people sick. It is a, it's a, a, an emergency. Uh, and, uh, and, and we really need the, the Speaker of the House, uh, as well as members of the, uh, of the House, to come together and authorize this spending. And then we can get the appropriators to send the money, and we can actually get construction to, one, to repair the, uh, the wells that are damaged, but two, to get running water to the houses of people on the Navajo Nation. Thankfully, Ben McAdams has brought it up with, uh, with Speaker Pelosi and, and is pushing, but we need to get the committee to get on board and move this along. And by the way, we're not the only state that has issues of this nature. There are a number of other states that want to work out arrangements with, uh, with Native American tribes, uh, and those issues will probably be attached to our bill. And that's, of course, what makes it a challenge, which is that every senator and every representative wants to do something for their state as well, and the bill gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and more and more money gets associated with the program, and then it gets too heavy for some people to lift. They say, wait, wait, I'm not going to spend that much money. The Navajo Nation feels that they are constantly underfunded from what they're promised. And two, that uh, after treaties are signed and agreed to, that there uh, is a tendency to ignore their end of the bargain. Well, uh, you know, I, I must admit, I have a great deal of confidence in the leadership of the Navajo Nation. I've had the occasion to meet with the president and with the executive committee members, uh, and uh, it's a very thoughtful, uh, uh, solid, capable group of people. Uh, and uh, and I appreciate the their willingness to negotiate in good faith uh, with our government uh, to to resolve this issue among others. And the frustration is that we're so slow and and coming to the table and 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 getting something done. I I do believe that that in this instance. Uh, we will be able to follow through and actually construct the, uh, the water infrastructure, which is promised, but it's going to require the house to move and then the appropriators. And, you know, we have a strange setting, Chad, you know this, but, but, but I found it strange, which is in every state I'm familiar with, the people who appropriate money for a particular project are also the ones uh, who have authorized it. Authorization and appropriation go together. But here in Washington, we have one committee that does the the authorizing, and another committee that does the appropriating. So it's a double-step process. So it's very, very slow. How much time do you think in, a, in the quasi-normal world they need to be anticipating before uh, construction actually begins on this development? Probably the earliest that it would be appropriate would be next year, next fall, uh, and then money would have to be let through contracts and so forth. So it's going to be you know, at least a year and probably substantially beyond that. Thank you, Senator Romney, for taking the time to visit with us today. Uh, we are going to take a quick break here on the county seat. We will come back in a minute to uh, wrap things up on the Water Settlement Act of 2019 and all the issues that surround it on the county seat. Welcome back to the county seat in San Juan County. I've enjoyed the day talking with you, Commissioner Gray Eyes, and understanding this issue. Uh, I think it would be really helpful for people to understand how long the water issue has been because you know 83,000 acre feet doesn't really solve the problems that you have with water. Historically, I think we had total water rights to San Juan River to Colorado River way before uh, your grandfather uh -huh. Columbus came. <laughs> uh huh. So. 
as was all Indian country, mm -hmm. as some people understand. Hopefully, everybody would understand someday. And uh, the use of the water is the federal government that became uh, the trustee. And uh, along came the trust responsibility. And as I understand, the uh, Indian nations were also had uh, a special sovereignty status. Mm -hmm. So, in that sense, the government also named the Native American to be ward of the federal government. Mm -hmm. They're set in the uh, give and take for over the years uh, without having the uh, understanding of the basic inherent rights of the Native American, particularly the Don Navajos. But I think uh, we need to be fair, equitable. It's our ancestral rights, inherent rights, that they do not understand. Well, thank you for taking the time to explain that to us. Yeah. Folks, I hope that you take time to ponder this and, and look at some of the challenges that take place so that you can be part of an equitable situation and uh, work to try and find a way of, of a negotiation of balance for everybody. Thank you for joining us this week on the County Seat. Remember, local government is where your life happens. Be part of the solution and get involved. We'll see you next week on the County Seat. Thank you for watching The County Seat. Be sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications to keep up to date on the program and happenings around Utah.